All right, turning now to new details tonight in the high profile murders of two teenage girls, Abby Williams and Libby German. The two best friends were killed in 2017 as they were walking on a trail in Delphi, Indiana. And now, Richard Allen, the man charged earlier this week for their murders, will be transferred from a county jail to the Indiana Department of Corrections for his own safety. On Thursday, a Carroll County judge requested that Allen be handed over, saying the suspect is in imminent danger of serious bodily injury or even death. And that same day, the judge recused himself from the case. All right now, News Nation is piecing together information about another man once considered a person of interest in this case. His name, Ronald Logan. Logan owned the property where Libby and Abby's bodies were found. In an FBI search warrant obtained by News Nation, a special agent stated there is probable cause to believe that Logan has committed the crime of murder and evidence of that could be found on his property. Logan, however, was never charged and he died in 2020. Joining us now to break down the latest information and provide some context here is former FBI agent Jennifer Koffendoffer, investigative producer and author Chris Todd, and private investigator Jason Jensen. Thank you so much all for being here. And Jennifer, I do want to start with you. Uh, former FBI agent Nicole Robertson swore under oath that she believes evidence of a homicide was located at the residence of Ronald Logan. And the girls were found on his property. Why was he never arrested? He wasn't arrested basically because um, the individuals who were in charge of the investigation felt he was too old to have committed a crime like this. And so much of the information and the probable cause developed was sort of brushed aside. Also, keep in mind that affidavit was not served until a month after the crime was committed. This was huge because it allowed for Mr. Logan, if he did commit this crime, uh, to remove, dispose of, clean uh, evidence that could have otherwise linked him to the crime. So those two factors uh, resulted in him not being charged. And Jennifer, we'll stick with you for a moment. The FBI discovered that Ronald Logan lied about his alibi, where he was on the night of the girl's murder. His cousin admitted to lying to the feds. Wouldn't that be enough for an arrest? Well, that's not enough. But that is a crucial point. Why did he want her to lie? And actually, she he asked her to lie well in advance of even that interview. So it's a, a situation that seemed very calculated and premeditated in terms of covering up what he was or was not involved in concerning their murders. And, and Chris, can I turn to you? You just released a book on the Delphi murders. What did you find in your investigation? Yeah, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Um, and out of protection of all the parties here today, I do want to say that, you know, this is through my investigation, uh, Jason and I, we opine that Ron Logan killed Abby and Libby. And this is a four year investigation also in my relationship with some of the family members that I worked on the case for free. Um, and I brought Jason in to help me, and Jason brought a lot of knowledge to the case that I wanted some outside help on. And I do believe that Ron Logan was responsible for the murders of Abby and Libby. What is the most compelling piece of evidence that, that turned your mind about this? In 2019, I told the families and ISP and Carroll County that I believed it was Ron Logan. And I'm a bit of an outsider. I'm out here in California. So I understand that they didn't want to listen to me. Um, I walked away for about two years and I worked on other cases when the FBI search warrant was leaked and no one still knows how that was leaked. I saw Ron's Logan name all over this search warrant and then it started to corroborate him saying, well, if this FBI agent is pointing out these cell phone pings, this lying about the alibi, he has the same gait, walk, um, his appearance is the same, his voice is not inconsistent with bridge guy. So I do believe that Ron Logan is bridge guy. Can you help lay out the evidence that our viewers may not know about this case? Well, this thing's moving a thousand miles an hour right now. And with the Richard Allen, what I'm hearing right now, which is kind of scaring me is Richard Allen may very well be the accomplice with Ron Logan. There is no scenario where it's just Richard Allen. So I think the best evidence comes from the FBI, the agent, that listed the cell phone pinging in the vicinity of the Monon Bridge at the time of the murders and also pinging at the bodies at 8 p.m. and 10, 15 p.m. 
So the alibi is big. There were multiple people that came forward that said Ron Logan was violent, that he had threatened to murder people before. And I think the video of the bridge guy itself, the clothing, and I think Jason can touch upon that too. I think it's right in front of us. That's why I named my book Forest for the Trees. They can't see what's right in front of them. Jason, I do want to bring you in. Can you talk a little bit more about what evidence you found compelling here? And, and what do you make of the idea that Ron Logan was simply too old to do something like this? Yeah, the, the first thing that really caught my attention to this is Bridge Guy was wearing that classic blue jacket we've seen numerous times in a, in a, in a camo ball cap. Two days after the murder, Ron Logan's wearing the exact same attire while being interviewed by a reporter. So that's the first thing that cued me in. It's like, oh my gosh, this is his property. The girls were murdered on his on his land, and he's got the audacity to wear the same clothing at the time of an interview while he's acting completely nonchalant and oblivious to the, the crimes themselves being committed where he had perfect access to. And, and, and what was your second question? Um, I, I was just asking about what was compelling to you. Why do you believe that 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 it is actually Ron Logan? Well, yeah, exactly. Well, for starts, was the, his appearance matched the bridge guy, and then all the evidence that was outlined by by not only the FBI but we have whistleblowers that you know Chris Todd writes about in his book that came forward to tell us that the only thing that excluded uh, them from going after Ron Logan was simply his age, which we know age is not a disqualifier. Disability is a, is a disqualifier. Just because he's 77 doesn't mean he's not capable of committing a, a, a heinous crime I like hear you. this. So, Jason, you don't believe he was too old to commit something like this? No, no, no. He was, he was well able to traverse up and down the hill. There's plenty of footage of him doing that. After the murders, he was proud to take people to the crime scene and show them where, where the murders happened. It's not like he was infirmed or anything like that where he couldn't, he didn't have mobility on his own property. He was well uh, capable of, of moving about. Jennifer, I want to turn it over to you for final thoughts. Uh, will the investigation into Logan be brought up potentially in Allen's trial? I mean, some might see him as the perfect fall guy because he isn't here to defend himself. He is no longer with us. Well, that's a very good point, and I feel like in any trial, uh, what a juror is going to have to look at is, is there reasonable doubt? And in this situation, if they are saying that Richard Allen is the only person responsible uh, for these heinous crimes, uh, unless they have very direct physical evidence, and if they are saying that Mr. Logan is not also linked, uh, I think it could be an uphill battle. Uh, in a jury, uh, for a jury to make that conclusion. Chris, I do want to ask one more question to you. What is your biggest concern as you're watching all of this unfold uh, and, and a potential trial going forward for Alan as well? I think it's a fascinating story, and I'm not trying to talk about it like a product or something like that, but this is a very unique situation, and my message would be to ISP and the Carroll County Sheriff, you have Richard Allen here, go get him. You know, I, I said it was Ron Logan. Jason helped me say that also. We had Leo whistleblowers come to us saying they believed it was Ron Logan also. My job is pretty much done here. I do plan on walking away from this. I wrote the book. I came forward, stuck my neck out. I dedicated the book to Abby and Libby and to our nation that turned a blind eye. And I'm not trying to blame anyone. I'm just saying, moving forward, let's see what we have on Richard Allen. It's a fascinating story right now. And I think the ISP in Carroll County did a great job to finally find this guy. No one said this guy's name once. So they've done something right here at this point. What role do you believe Allen did play and what should he be held responsible for? Well, if he is the accomplice, then he, they have the death penalty in Indiana and I believe they will seek that. Um, I do have some sources that kind of paint the picture and I'll give a shout quickly to Delphi After Dark. Um, that podcast that they do paint a very compelling picture with this eyewitness at the plaza seeing a man in black clothing with a strange look. He could weave down to the property without going on the bridge. He could end up right at Ron Logan's property. So does Ron Logan call Richard Allen, who's on a burner phone, and say, it's on, let's go, and meet me down on my property? We don't know. I can't confirm or deny it, but right now, from everything I see, you have a double murder arrest 
You have a $20 million bond. They have something on Richard Allen. I appreciate this. This is it is a complicated case, and I certainly appreciate all of your time tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.